Did you ever want to import a GIF animation into your Juice project? Maybe you didn't. And maybe you will not ever want to do that. Because some people told me it's not a serious thing to do. But I would wonder that and I think it's pretty cool. So let me just show you. This is Juice project that can load a GIF as an animation, just as everyone knows GIF um, files. The graphics interchange format GIF is a bitmap image format that was developed by a team at the online service provider CompuServe led by blah 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 blah. So basically what a lot of people want you to believe is that a GIF is an image format and that's because the original creators CompuServe did not intend it to be an animated thing. But as you have probably noticed, the whole world sees a GIF file as an animation. And that's also why the first thing you see when you open Wikipedia is a GIF that is used as an animation. So what exactly is a GIF? It is a header. And then there is some stuff like finding out the width and the height of the whole canvas to draw on. The global color table, so basically a palette of colors. And then we loop through all the images and then end. So basically you could just go ahead on my Jitter page and you could just get this project that I'm using here and copy a bunch of stuff and then you would have the implementation. But this video should also be about how I got there because I think that's much more interesting than just watching someone explaining how the implementation works. But we'll get to both things. How does the implementation work? There is a main component with a very minimal layout component and a timer. And there is this funny little GIF object that gets the data, the pointer to the void and the size of the data which comes from the binary data in this case. So it's part of the project, I guess. And then it paints the thing. And for each time a callback, it just increments its read index so that it reads from the next image and calls repaint. And resizing just resets the animation and else does, does nothing because paint already takes care of the resizing process and stuff. So it's easy to use already. But how did I get there actually? So basically the first thing I asked myself was what is the capability of juice and gif so i found some things to click on and these things were um, basically a person asking how do i get the gif animation and jules said ah oh, i made an implementation but it's not quite there yet and you could modify it a little bit and then it's cool so that's basically what mod motivated me to actually try it then there is this um reddit thing where someone asked the same thing and then someone said yeah you can do that but you can use an, another program to get every separate image and then load that and obviously that sucks so let's not do this instead let's focus on what the api gives us as classes so there is this image file format and it has three forms and one of them is the gif image file format so let's do this and I just call that format for now. Actually, let's put it somewhere else because I want to bring you a point across and that, therefore I will put it directly into the paint method, even though that performs like ass. Now, obviously it does not like that because these things are virtual functions. All right, we want the GIF image format. So now we have a format object that can sort of handle with GIF animations and it has the method decode image and it wants an input stream. Um, let's already put something here that we call stream. And so we'll make the input stream and we notice it doesn't like that because it also is a virtual function. So what we can do then is we go to juice input stream and we find out that it is implemented in different ways and obviously since we are getting the input stream from our binary data we use the memory input stream now we actually have an input stream object that can be forwarded to the uh, gif image format but it has a constructor and its constructor basically takes this stuff and the word true for copying and now we made, um, now we can get the image. And now we can draw the image. So let's try that.
we drew the first image now. And this might seem like we already accomplished a lot, but where are the other images? They must be somewhere in the input stream, right? So what does decode image even do? Let's find out. We go into there. Some code that just does something with platform um, differences. Then it makes a unique pointer to a, a weird object called GIF loader that already does something apparently. And then we get the image. Yeah, well, so what I did then was that I asked myself how to get the other images. So I found out that the stream has this little is exhausted um, method. So I thought to myself, yeah, why not just saying while stream is not exhausted yet, basically get another image from the stream because the more we, we read from it, the further we go and stuff. And at some point it's, it's exhausted. So at this point you should pretend like this is a vector of images where we um, basically push back, right? It would look like this, push back, blah, blah, blah. And then we could like take this vector of images and just play it back in our paint method. I cannot demonstrate that now because we are in the paint method, but you get the idea. And that didn't work and it didn't work for a good reason. And I'll show you why. When you go into the decode image thing and then check out what the GIF loader actually does, then you see um, in its constructor, it already checks the header it checks some other stuff that has to be checked on initialization. And then it just goes ahead with this for loop, checking for different things to create an image. And that's what it does. And then it, it ends. And then the image is in here and we can actually use it. So the problem with that, if we go back to this image is now imagine this image in the code. It would mean that we go from here to here. But instead of looping back to this point, we just go to the end. And if we called this method again, then it would pretend like we're starting off here again, but we want to start off here. So that's just the, the problem that I had to solve then. So let's just get rid of all this stuff again. Make this beautiful again. Now, GIF. So what I did here is I also made a memory input stream, nothing special. Then I made this custom format thing, which has the method valid. And it checks if the memory input stream is valid. And if yes, then we loop through the um, input stream until it's done and get new images, check if they're valid. And if yes, then we add them to our vector of images. And then there is a little init function that does nothing special, just getting the maximum width and height and then doing something with the member variables of the image. <clears throat> but I will get to that later. But yeah, then we have a vector of images, right? And we have the read index and we can loop through it and paint it. And basically that's how we can play back the GIF animation in the most basic way. So let's go to the format that I modified. And I will just say that now the only difference is that it does the platform specific stuff in this valid method. And it also creates the loader in this valid method. And it reads the header and then returns whether or not reading the header was successful. And reading the header means just this stuff and then it's done so everything that came after that i just put into this new function and that's almost all i did i just separated the method into two different methods and that's how i made it work already i was really surprised that it didn't took a little bit more effort but it was really that easy and then you can just load another image and get the image from there but one little thing that i had to add was actually getting the image X and image Y positions instead of just width and height. I'll show you why. So basically when you have a GIF animation or a GIF file, then that has some sort of canvas with specific bounds. And these bounds are used in the first image always, I guess, but I'm not sure. And um, when there is another image in it, then it might be very small or it might be over here. You know, because it the individual sub-images, I call them sub-images, um, they are only used where they are needed. So if the next image only needs to repaint some stuff here, then this is indicated by the position of the image. So I basically got the position info from the memory input stream, which is highlighted by these green rectangles now, and also added them to my custom image object that I made. 
which is basically just a juice image wrapped around a position. But yeah, as you can see, this all looks very cryptic, but you can see a reoccurring pattern in all these methods that are in this stuff that I got from the juice code, which is that the it always takes the memory input stream and then reads a little bit of bytes, puts that into some sort of buffer, which is a unit 8 um, array. And then basically we're reading from that buffer in different ways, sometimes with this little Andean method. Uh, oh yeah, I was told that if we just read from one byte, then we don't need to care about Andeanness. And if it's about multiple bytes, like here where we have two bytes for each in piece of information, then we need to care about the Andeanness of the format. And I think I read somewhere that the GIF um, specification has a very specific sort of Andeanness. And apparently Juice has some nice helper classes for that. So that's cool. So yeah, we use this format object to create the whole thing and then it gets destructed again. And then we just have the vector of images in our GIF. And we can work with that with the paint method by just looping through it. And when we have reached the end, then we just draw white. Actually, the GIF format has a byte specifically meant to index which color in the palette of its color palette is the background color. But I tried to implement that and it seems that most GIF animations just use a very bright green tone for that and they don't really care for setting a reasonable color as a background color. Apparently a background color is just not used. So now I want to show you a little example of how I implemented this in a plugin. First of all, just practically. I will show you a bit of the implementation in the code, but not everything because it's a little bit more than the actual um, GIF loader project. So let's just play back some stuff and just look what I'm doing. So as you can see, this basically has a little range parameter where you can set the range of the animation, so which actual frames should be used for the animation. We have playback speed with duplicate speed, even more duplicate and half time and double half time and also the face because it might be that not the first image is the best image. For example, at the moment, the heart is always on the one. If we shifted that around by 180 degrees, then the heart would actually occur on the offbeat, which would not make a lot of sense in this context, in my opinion, but it might make sense in some contexts. And yeah, this, this has a very good performance because as you've um, heard before, the GIF is constructed of a lot of sub images and stuff like that. So even if you put it very high, it will still not interfere with the actual graphics used on the other UI elements. And I've seen a lot of examples of Juice projects where that was not the case. Obviously, you would not ever want to put something on this size anyway, because if you are in, in, in the middle of a project, yeah, I mean, you would just put something like this into the corner as a sort of inspiration for your sound design. Maybe you're just designing on a synthesizer that you have in the middle of the screen. And the other stuff is the GIF animation is down here to just remind you that you want to go into a racing direction with the song or something or, or whatever you put there. So basically that, that's the idea of the plugin and, and I will make a cheesy promotional video that will be m much more fun than this 
in that regard let me show you a little bit of the code before this video ends so yeah obviously i want to um upload this code to my github page as well but i would still advise you to look at the other project if you want to get started with jit animation loading and juice because this is a little bit more involved i just want to give you a little overview on what had to be done more to make this happen let's for example just take the process of loading the gif you get a file path from somewhere maybe from the file chooser object that is very nice or from drag and drop component, blah, blah, blah. So you check if it, the ending is actually GIF. And then you make a file object of that, get a memory block, and fill the memory block with the file information. The, only then you can reload the GIF with the GIF reload method. So at this point, it looks a lot like what you already saw. The, we clear the images vector because it could it could be already full with the last GIF animation you had. And then you... Go through the input um, stream with the format, get all the images, the background color, maximum width and height, the e extra stuff, and then the new loop points that I introduced, that I used in the paint method then, so that we don't run out of the bounds and some other edge cases, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to explain that, but because it's actually quite readable if you just try to look at it but it's no fun to explain it. it's like explaining a joke or something and you would run into these sort of issues if you wanted to implement that anyway uh, you would come up with something very similar i guess set frame 2 is the new method that just gets the current phase which is basically the ppq positions fraction uh, times the rate and process block and the offset that i described uh, in degree but it's actually a normalized parameter and some edge cases with that blah 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 and then we get the read index that we will use in the paint method. So we were uh, stuck in the reloading process. So we get the loader lambda, um, make a new controls editor, which is the editor where all the parameters are. As you've seen, it did not exist from the initialization from the plugin, but only started to exist when an actual GIF file was loaded. Yeah, that's basically this part of the code. And it gets the loader lambda so that it can also load a new GIF file with this button that I added there. And um, we, we make it visible, we give it bounds, we update the FPS so that they are only, um, first of all, they can only be in the range of 1 to 50 FPS. But um, if they happen to be somewhere in between, then we make it dependent on the current playback speed and the range as well as well the, the range already contains the information on how many images to to wrap that around and stuff so that we don't have too many frames or too less frames for the current frame rate that is needed and yeah you know what i mean then we have some calculations about the current string of the path so that we can save that in, in the state of the audio processor value tree state state so you know that we can serialize the information on whether or not we have loaded a GIF and if yes then where is it so that we can so that if we reload the whole thing that it remembers our settings same for loop start and end and some edge cases blah 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 so yeah basically that's how the um, project grew in order to um, get to reasonable implementation that can be used with a lot of fun in a DAW. And yeah, as you can see, it's still very easy. It just has 133 lines in this thing. The controls editor for the parameters also not, not very big. A little to-do list. Um, did I solve any of this yet? Oh yeah, I did this already. Didn't try this. Yeah, these things, I have an idea how to tackle the visual glitches. I, I would have to rewrite some stuff for a reverse button, but that's actually uh, an idea that I have in mind. But yeah, that's basically it. It's a very simple project and I will also put it on Jitter because I want to release the plugin. Yeah, so I, I hope you had a lot of fun and learn a little bit more GIF handling. I'm looking forward to see more plugins that actually utilize GIFs in some way. So get creative everyone.